We have gathered quite a crowd, as you can see. This is just us asking for a taxi. Kande is considered to be one of the townships with the best area of a Tiguanian oolong tea. Upon arrival here, though, we felt we probably didn't want our Tiguanian to come from Gande town itself, as I mentioned in my previous video, but we still decided that we will not let our preconceptions get in the way and set out to explore the local tea here in Gande first, before we made up our mind. Gande is so tiny and the locals all have their own transport, so there just aren't any proper taxis here, so we were lucky to come across someone who was happy to show us the best tea masters in this area. We started our day by looking at where some of the best Tiaguanyin tea grows here in Gande town. As you can see, there's lots of Tiaguanyin here. The local authorities have invested significantly in improving the tea production of this area, which is lovely to see. But another thing that they've also invested in was a road, meaning that in addition to the altitude here being relatively low, the tea grows not too far from the roadside, which isn't necessarily the best area for Tiaguanyin. Mm -hmm. The first tea master we were taken to see was this wonderful thing. <laughs> the tea master is a teacher by profession and used to work in the school just across the road from his home but then decided to become a tea master. He explained that this is because he considered being a tea master to be an even more noble profession. He had many delicious Tiaguanians, but his cow Tiaguanian, which means baked Tiaguanian, was the one that we loved the most. It was straight out of the baking oven and smelled like delicious strawberry jam, shortbread and milk. He had really good tea, but we felt like it had too many notes of dried grass, was lacking in those sweet notes of nectar and butter, and the mouthfeel wasn't very silky. Tiaguanin can be made from a number of different varietals. In our opinion, we prefer the flavor of the Tiaguanin varietal of Tiaguanin. Although this tea master said that the varietal was Tiaguanin, it looked to us more like a Ben Shan varietal, which is still a lovely varietal, but we were very much hoping we can find something even better. Most importantly, when we asked the tea master if we can see his tea garden, he said he could only show us photographs as it was located too far from where he lived. As you guys can see, because Gande is a town, there isn't much land to grow Tiguanin by people's houses, so tea masters often don't grow the tea by themselves here. They have to buy leaves from tea gardens and then process them. <laughs> After having seen many more tea masters that day, we realized that this is true, unfortunately, for most people making tea here. But we were hoping to come across someone who grew their tea in addition to processing it, because we really wanted to see the conditions in which the tea grew and to have more control over the raw material. This lady was probably the best illustration of the situation here. Her husband buys up the tea leaves and processes them into tea guanyin and this lovely lady sells it. As you can see, we get the finest spring water to showcase their tea. Because this couple don't spend time growing the leaves, they have a lot more resources than tea growers. Because of this, they are able to export tea, for example, and all their time and energy goes into selling the tea. In our next week's video, you'll see that this is very different to what the tea masters who grow their tea do. As for the tea of this particular family, we liked their tea, but we found the flavor was quite watery, lacking depth and complexity, and the aftertaste was relatively flat, so we felt that our search had to continue. We really wanted to try out the high mountain Tiaguanyin because we heard so many good things about it, but the issue was transport. Believe it or not, in a town like Gande, this would not have been an easy feat. But that's what the next week's video is all about.